Welcome to Complete Health with Dr. Mike Rogers. I'm April, your host. This month, during Breast Cancer Awareness Month, we want to elevate the awareness of breast cancer. Good morning, Dr. Rogers. Good morning, April. How are you today? I'm doing well, thank you. Can you explain to our listeners what is breast cancer? Well, breast cancer is a disease in which malignant cells, or cancer cells, form in the tissues and the ducts of the breasts. Um, The thing is with that, the cancer cells grow and uh, it caused damage in the DNA of the cells themselves. And what causes the damage? It could be a whole host of things. It could be radiation. It could be environmental. It could be genetic. uh, Or it could be a combination of them all. Science right now doesn't know what actually causes it uh, because there's so many risk factors out there. In in fact, 60 to 70% of the people with breast cancer or diagnosed with breast cancer uh, don't even fit into these risk factors. So that's the concern that there is with breast cancer right now. Are women the only ones affected with breast cancer? Uh, no, no. Men are affected as well. It's, it's not as prevalent in men as it is in women, but it, it, one of the things that it is is it's, it can be underdiagnosed in, for the fact that only one in a thousand men may be diagnosed, but it could be up to as much as 20% of the population could have uh, breast cancer potential in men. Wow, that's frightening. It is. What are the risk factors for breast cancer? Well, there's many. There's a whole host. There's, as we we talked about a little bit earlier, there's environmental risk factors that can play a part, uh, things that lifestyle risk factors that play a part, and then also genetic risk factors that play a part. And all of those things can all be combined. There can also be health or dental risk factors. I know we've talked about in the past that periodontal disease can actually increase the risk of systemic inflammation and the bacteria itself can create issues within other parts of the body. You know, and actinomyces is just one of the bacteria that they find in in people with breast cancer uh, in urine samples uh, is is an oral bacteria. So in elevated elevated actinomyces levels in people with, with breast cancer in their urine and then the bacteria itself and the inflammation can create issues elsewhere in the body. And one, that's one theory as well. Studies show that uh, women over the age of 50 who have periodontal disease are 14% more likely to get breast cancer than women who aren't, who have no periodontal disease. And then if you combine it with women with periodontal disease over 50 and who smoke, it actually elevates it over 30% increase in risk. Wow. What about um, alcohol consumption or weight? Alcohol and weight, big, sedentary lifestyle plays a big part. Our diet plays a big part. You know, you have a high, high fat content diet, low vegetables, low fruits, and fiber content will escalate your or increase your likelihood of cancers in the future. Uh, the, the lack of exercise, lack of mobility, Things like that are also going to increase your likelihood of cancer, breast cancer. Um, there's so many things that play a part. That's why it's it's so multifactorial that it, it's difficult just to put your finger on one specific thing. Other risk factors that contribute to breast cancer is a gender. Women are 100 times more likely to develop breast cancer than men. Age, two-thirds of women are over that develop breast cancer are over 50. Uh, race, Caucasian women are diagnosed more than, than other races. Uh, family history, genetic factors that play a part. Uh, personal history, what we do itself. Um, menstrual issues, you know, if you, you start menses as a, a young lady before the age of 12, you increase your likelihood. And if you continue to menstruate after your age 55, that's going to increase your likelihood of breast cancer as well. Uh, When you have your first child, if you're older when you have your first child or never having had a child can increase your likelihood of breast cancer. There's other things such as environmental like we talked about, uh, excess radiation from the environment, from 
tests, from medical things, things like that, that can increase the likelihood. The density of the breasts themselves uh, can also uh, create potential issues for uh, developing breast cancer in the future. So there's, there's a lot of things that play a part here that certainly can, can predispose you to uh, breast cancer. Dr. Rogers, as a dentist, what are your recommendations to combat some of these risk factors? Well, proper home care is a must. And proper home care consists of brushing at least twice a day and flossing one time a day. Along with that, you want to limit the amount of sugar, sugary drinks, uh, carbonated beverages, and simple carbohydrates in your diet because these are known to feed the fast-growing cancer cells. That's great advice. And what I'd like to do now is just introduce a very dear friend of ours that we've known for almost 25 years now, and she's living testament to how you can really be a strong person and, and beat this. So what I'd like to do now is introduce a friend of ours, uh, Jen Haber. Jen, welcome to the studio this morning, and I... Uh, could just give us a little background on yourself, if you would. Good morning, Mike, and good morning, April. I want to thank you guys for having me here today. <laughs> I'm a big advocate of awareness, especially breast cancer awareness. I am 48 years old. I'm a married mother of two boys. I've been married for 24 years, and my boys are age 19 and 21. And I started with my first cancer when I was only 27 years old. Oh I had thyroid cancer. And then when I was 35, I developed breast cancer and I had to have a double mastectomy. And then at the age of 42, they found precancerous cells in my uterus and I had to have a complete hysterectomy. There's a vast history of cancer in my family. My grandmother died at the age of 51 of breast cancer. My mother developed breast cancer at the age of 50. And in my grandmother's family, there were 17 siblings and of the 17, 15 of them died of cancer in their 50s. So I was already aware that I needed to be proactive in terms of self exams and um, just you know having mammograms early. One of the things that strikes me is that studies show that the genetic aspect of cancer uh, is only say a, a small percentage, 10 to 20% of the people are genetically predisposed to it. But your family, I mean, that's significant where you've got so many people in your family on your mom's side that have developed cancer and succumbed to it. So it's obviously there is a genetic component in that fact. So you do fall into that. But the, the issue here is, is with a lot of patients, they don't know. They don't know what, what, risk factors they're actually falling under. But uh, I'd like to go into a little more detail if you wouldn't mind sharing your story with us. Absolutely. You are listening to Complete Health with Dr. Mike Rogers. When we come back, we'll continue to discuss Jen's journey. Complete Health Dentistry. Imagine a dental office where they recognize that your mouth is a window into the health of the rest of your body. Hi, I'm April from Dr. Michael Rogers' office. We are that office. Due to our commitment to the complete health of our guests, we have changed our name from Smiles by Design to Complete Health Dentistry of Northeastern PA. We know that regular dental visits will not only help you maintain healthy teeth and gums, but help you prevent serious health conditions and maintain optimal overall well-being. Complete Health Dentistry of Northeastern PA, transforming your health for a lifetime. Call us today at 570-253-5000 and begin your path to overall health. Welcome back. Today we are talking with Jen Haber about her cancer journey. As we discussed in our first segment, 60 to 70% of people diagnosed with breast cancer have no connection to any of the risk factors. Jen, in our discussion, uh, you seem to have a significant genetic and family history. Uh, can you go into that in a little more detail? Absolutely. As I mentioned, there were a lot of people in my family that have had cancer, and it ranges from colon cancer to breast cancer to ovarian cancer and 
uterine cancer. Jen, can you go into a little more detail on where your cancer story started uh, with the thyroid cancer and then the progression from there on how you found breast cancer and all of that? Absolutely. When I was 25 years old, I was having some heart issues and I had my cardiologist notice a lump on my neck. He told me, you know what, you really ought to have that checked out. And because I was going through some other issues, I just put it off. Finally, by the age of 27, I noticed it myself and I went to an endocrinologist and the endocrinologist told me that I had nodules on my neck and that we were just going to watch it for about a year. She gave me some medication, you know, because I had issues with my thyroid and it wasn't shrinking. So after a year, the decision was made to have it out. So then I had a complete thyroidectomy and when it came out, to everyone's surprise, it did have cancer in it. After that, I just had to have some radioactive iodine and knock on wood, everything's been good in that department. From there, I was always very concerned about getting breast cancer because of the family history. When I was 30, I talked to my gynecologist about it and he told me that because of the family history, I could start having mammograms at an earlier age. First mammogram I had was at the age of 30 and it came back that there was a lump. So of course I was extremely scared and you know frightened because I knew that you know my mom had had it and my grandmother had had it. So I, I was a wreck until the results came back. Fortunately, it came back benign. So did you have a tissue biopsy of, of that first lump or did you just go by the mammogram studies? No, I actually had a biopsy done, yeah. Um, and over the next five years, I would have multiple biopsies done. Many lumps were found, and as a matter of fact, I had to have four lumpectomies. They were precancerous at the time. And with every one, you know, they were pretty sure that I was going to be fine and I didn't have to have a mastectomy. Until when I was 35 years old, they had, there were more lumps. And so they were concerned at this point, and I had to face the decision of whether or not to have a complete mastectomy. After talking to my husband about it and everything, I decided it was the right choice. And I was glad that I did because it did, I did have cancer in both breasts. Fortunately for me, they were still contained in the ducts. So it was a very early stage and it was caught. And I am so grateful that I did have this done at that time. Jen, I know the primary genes that are evaluated for breast cancer are the BRCA1 and BRCA2 genes. Were these evaluated for you? Yes, they were. I had the BRCA1 test and the BRCA2 test, as well as something known as Lynch syndrome. And ironically, I came back negative for all of these tests. We have such a strong family predisposition, but they believe the gene has just not been detected yet. At what point in, in your series, because you had uh, needle biopsies and then you had four lumpectomies, at what point in that were these BRCA genes evaluated? After the first lumpectomy, it came back benign, but when I started to get more lumps and they came back precancerous, it was at this point that I was sent to New York for all the genetic testing. And I think that they did this because they wanted to evaluate whether or not I should have a, hist a mastectomy. Dr. Rogers, could you explain to our listeners what BRCA1 and BRCA2 is? Well, BRCA1 and BRCA2 are genetic blood tests that evaluate the the, the gene, these are the genes for potential breast cancer issues. And what it is, is if there's a, a mutation in one of those genes, it doesn't say you have breast cancer, but it, it predisposes you to breast cancer. So Jen, I'm sure there's many women out there listening that um, have a lot of questions. One of um, what was the surgery, what was entailed with that? That's a great question. And I know that I was really nervous about what it was going to entail myself. Um, I was very fortunate because since the cancer was still in the ducts, I was able to have what's called a skin sparing mastectomy. And they really didn't do it in our area, so I had to go to NYU. And basically what that entailed was just having the breasts removed, but I could still keep the skin. And they would put temporary expanders on the inside, and that would take the place for the next three months. And then after that time, you go through what's known as a reconstruction. So Jen, I know our listeners can't see you, but you look fabulous. So can you talk to us a little more about the reconstruction aspect? 
First of all, you're so sweet. <laughs> so basically what happens is after you have the mastectomy, at right at the same point, they put in what's known as temporary expanders and they go underneath the skin. And the idea is to stretch out the skin to make room for permanent implants. So what they do is they inject these inspan expanders with saline and every two weeks you go back to the doctor and they inject a little bit more and a little bit more until it's the size that you want. At that point, it's about three months after the surgery, you end up having a reconstructive surgery where what they do is they take out the expanders at that point and they put in permanent implants. So this sounds like it was a very long procedure um, from start to finish. How did all of this, all these surgeries and whatnot affect you emotionally? Well, to be honest, I know initially I was full of emotion about, you know, losing my breasts because I think that every woman, you know, knows that that's a part of her and, and, you know, it makes you feel like you're losing a part of your gender. But I think for me, I knew that the risk was much greater not to have the surgery, knowing that my grandmother had died at 51 of breast cancer, knowing my mother had breast cancer at the age of 50 and had gone through a similar thing. I did not want to have to go through those things. So I was very grateful to be, to be given the chance to have this done. In the U.S., one in eight women will develop breast cancer in their lifetime. And things that will not cause breast cancer one, it's not contagious. Two, it's not caused by wearing bras with underwires. It's not caused by using deodorant, getting mammograms, caffeine, plastic food utensils, microwaves, cell phones. But Jen, when we come back, if we can go into what you believe some of your risk factors were, and we'll go into a little more detail on that. You're listening to Complete Health with Dr. Mike Rogers. Uninterrupted, unhurried attention? Time to talk about your health, your smile, and how they affect you from head to toe? If stress-free dentistry is what you are looking for, visit Dr. Michael Rogers of Complete Health Dentistry of Northeastern PA. We believe your mouth is a gateway to overall health. Complete Dental Health is the first line of defense against many diseases, including diabetes, heart disease, and cancer. In his state-of-the-art practice in Holmesdale, Dr. Rogers offers the care you need to look and feel your best. From preventive care to implants, sleep apnea, and sedation, this is the premier dentistry you deserve. Call Dr. Rogers at 253-5000 and schedule your appointment. Just one rejuvenating visit and you'll be spoiled. Complete Health Dentistry, transforming your health for a lifetime. Welcome back. Jen, can you go into some of the risk factors you believe you dealt with prior to your cancer diagnosis? Sure, Mike. As mentioned before, I mean, definitely a genetic predisposition. Although a gene has not been discovered in our family, we definitely have some type of disposition in there because we have so much cancer. And the next one, though, that I wanted to talk about was the radiation exposure. Over a 10-year period, I had, a I had 24 surgeries. And in that time, I had multiple x-rays done. And most of them were done prior to the cancer diagnosis. For instance, I have a pacemaker. So before getting the pacemaker, I was having some x-rays done and after the pacemaker. And I also had my gallbladder removed, so they had to do x-rays on that. You know, the thyroid, when they were checking all the nodules all the time and things like that, they always were doing x-rays. So I really do think that that played a, a part in it as, you know, it, they say that that's a significant risk factor mm -hmm. for that. Another one would be the poor diet, you know, and I hate to even admit this because it's something that, you know, you don't like to talk about. But I know for me, I never liked vegetables. And I know I was like that little kid, you know, back in uh, sitting at the table and my mother begging me to eat the green beans. And I just never really liked them. And I guess I never really thought it was a big deal. But when I was going through all this genetic testing and things like that, the University of Scranton asked me if I would do a cancer research study with them because they were really interested in my family. And this is the first time that I found out how much diet plays a role. And, you know, I definitely fit the, the poor diet category. You know, in, in addition to not eating vegetables, I always would... I have high fat content, high um, carbohydrate content, 
And that's something that I really had to change. Another one of the risk factors for me was alcohol consumption. Um, I was never a person who drank every day, so I never thought that I had a problem with alcohol. Um, however, when I did drink, I drank a lot. And later in life, I you know, realized that I was drinking too much, and I am now in a program of recovery. And today I help other women. So when I take a look at the risk factors, it just does make me wonder if that played a part as well. And lastly, I see that, you know, dense breast tissue is also one of those things. And I think if women have dense breasts, that's something that they need to be concerned about because it doesn't mean you have cancer, but it's harder to detect. And when I started going for mammograms and things like that, they would tell me all the time that it was just hard to see in an x-ray or a mammogram or, you know, whatever test that they were doing. And so that's why I started with the lumpectomies to begin with because they, you know, they weren't sure if it was cancerous or not. Jen, in your journey, you didn't mention anything about radiation and chemotherapy. Was that something that you needed? I was really lucky, April, because I didn't have to have it. Um, and I just owe that to early detection. You know, if I had waited any longer for the breast cancer, um, I would definitely have needed it, and it would have been at a much later stage. They were able to get it out, as I mentioned before, when it was still in, contained in the ducts. So it had not started to metastasize. It, you know, was fully contained. So after having the mastectomy, I was very lucky that I didn't have to have that done. That's wonderful. So, doctor, I've had patients call us to um, cancel cleaning appointments and so forth, um, telling us that they're going through cancer treatment. What are your thoughts on that? Well, obviously, you need to follow what your physician or your oncologist says. But one of the things that you really need to keep in mind is that you need to, especially any type of cancer, any type of health issue, you need to maintain good oral health to keep the bacteria and the inflammation under control. Uh, keeping that bacteria and inflammation uh, under control helps your body's immune system just deal with what it has to deal with, which is the cancer. Um, and if, if you have these other things going on in your mouth, uh, it just waters down your defense systems, for lack of a better term, and now it has to fight bacteria, it has to fight inflammation, it has to fight cancer, it has to fight other systemic issues that are going on, such as diabetes or, or, or heart disease and things like that. So you need to keep your mouth under uh, healthy as possible. Radiation and chemotherapy can, can change the bacteria in your mouth and it can change also the environment in your mouth. It can dry it out and increase the likelihood of cavities and periodontal disease. So treating this can help reduce the potential for future dental problems and, and tooth loss and bone loss and, and other issues that, once again, just starts that whole vicious cycle of infection and inflammation going on again. Can you explain to our listeners how we can help treat some of these symptoms that well, come from chemotherapy? Yes. Uh, what There's multiple things out there. There's salivary substitutes that we can prescribe. There's... Uh, lozenges and things that can help increase the the saliva in your mouth. There's uh, we use uh, non-invasive uh, periodontal treatments that or non-surgical periodontal treatments that uh, deliver antibacterial, meaning rinses and medications under the gum to kill and eliminate the bacteria, uh, as well as custom-made fluoride uh, mouth guards that can deliver fluoride to your teeth and gums and help not only kill the bacteria, but prevent decay. So these are all great adjuncts to, to keeping your gums healthy and decreasing that inflammation and the bio burden that can go through your body. The majority of men who develop breast cancer have infiltrating duct carcinoma, meaning the cells around the ducts begin to invade the surrounding tissues. And if caught early, it can be treated. So please don't just Put your head in the sand like an ostrich and, and ignore the warning signs that you, you may have breast cancer as a man. Before we end the show, what advice would you have for our listeners? Well, number one, and I guess this really has a lot to do with all of them that I'm going to talk about, is early detection. You know, if you can catch this early, you are increasing your chances of, you know, number one, not having to have any chemo, number two, surviving breast cancer. 
But the first thing I would make sure that um, everyone does is just to know the risk factors. You know, Mike had gone over a lot of them. And I think that if you don't know what they are, you can Google them, look them up. I think you have to do an honest self-evaluation just to kind of see where you're at with your overall health. You know, make sure that you are going to see a dentist, you know, properly. Make sure that you are eating a proper diet. You know, if you just take a look at all those different risk factors and kind of see where you're at, it can help you, you know, see where you fall. Um, I think women have to really be proactive in doing their own self-exams. I think that so many women are, you know, they feel like they don't know how to do them or, you know, they might be embarrassed to ask somebody, you know, and you can always Google this. I mean, if you go on YouTube or something, there's always different explanations. You can ask your doctor. But once again, I think that that's also really, you know, important. And if you feel a lump, if you feel anything, make sure you go and you get that checked out. Don't just brush it off. Don't think it's nothing. Make sure that you go and you get it checked out. And also look at your predisposition. You know, take a look and see what your family history is. Because I know for me, when I knew that we had a strong family history, especially in breast cancer, I went to my gynecologist and I asked him about getting mammograms done at an earlier age. I know that usually it's around 40, but I started at the age of 30, and I'm so grateful that I did because in doing so, this helped me be able to get this detected early. And, um, you know, I had the mastectomy and I avoided breast cancer, you know, to a larger scale. I want to thank you, Jen, for joining us on our show this week. I really commend you for being such a strong proponent for breast cancer. Dr. Rogers and the team at Complete Health Dentistry of NEPA, as proponents of National Breast Cancer Awareness Month and Men's Breast Cancer Awareness Week, which begins tomorrow, recommend that being aware of the signs and symptoms of breast cancer is the key to early detection and ensuring the best possible outcome of treatment should you be diagnosed. In fact, we learned today that when breast cancer is detected in the earliest stage, the five-year survival rate is 98%. The best plan of action to ensure early detection is to give yourself regular breast exams, contact your doctor should you discover any abnormalities, stay on top of your annual health exams, and have mammograms done regularly. You also should stay on top of uh, coming in for regular checkups and cleanings, even if you're going through cancer treatment. We can help keep your mouth healthy to allow your body to focus on fighting the cancer, not gum disease or tooth infection. We believe raising awareness is the key to prevention and early detection. You've been listening to Complete Health with Dr. Mike Rogers. Join us next week as we discuss the importance of using your insurance and your health savings account benefits before year end so you don't lose them. Helping health industry, transforming your health for a lifetime. teeth and gums for a lifetime? How important is it? At Complete Health Dentistry of Northeastern Pennsylvania, that is our focus. If your mouth isn't healthy, your body can be affected as well. Gum disease has been linked to heart attacks, strokes, and diabetes. And if your teeth and gums are in bad shape, it affects your ability to smile, eat, and live life to the fullest. You've worked hard. Isn't it time to take care of yourself? Turn to Dr. Michael Rogers at Complete Health Dentistry, where you and your health are our number one focus. Take time for your health. Call Complete Health Dentistry at 253-5000 and schedule your new patient experience today. See how we can help you feel and look better than you ever thought possible. Complete Health Dentistry, transforming your health for a lifetime. Visit us on the web at completehealthdentistryofnepa.com.